This rally car is something special. It's an Irish-built prototype that could well give inspiration to others. Its first outing is on the Haltone International with Billy Coleman as driver. It looks like a Mark III Escort, but this baby, the work of Dungannon's Sydney Meek and Gartrack of Guildford, is a 280-horse Tiger. The Coleman car is just one of the 76 lined up at the start of the 25-stage Haltone Cork 20. Cork is the headquarters, and drivers such as Gerald Buckley, John Coyne, and Russell Brooks are among the top seeds. Tony Keating, the new national champion, is another favourite, along with this expert, Brendan Fagan from Dublin, who, with Keating and Buckley, spearhead the Vauxhall attack. Well, I think of all the people in front of us, the locals, Jerry Buckley and Tony Keating, must be the favourites to be leading today, I think. Yeah, why do you say that? A little bit of uh, local knowledge would have Well, been... I think a lot of the stages are around Tony Keating's back door, and Jerry's been rallying down here for a long time, so I think he might know a little bit about it already. How many times have you done the Cork 20? I've done it nine times and never finished. Well, you're trying to beat that this time, are you? It's a, it's a hoodoo event for me. It's early on Saturday morning when the action starts at Marina Road. Wolverhampton's Russell Brooks leads the parade with the checkered flag Stratus. A car every 30 seconds. Jer Buckley is next in line with the Vauxhall. At three, the Mill Street ace, Billy Coleman, in the superbly engineered Team PR Rally back car. Will it stick the pace over the next two days? The Haltone has a reputation for fast stages and a high rate of attrition. called for caution and over the early stages the top seeds stay in line. Keating spins, Coleman loses time with a loose connection in the temperature gauge but both charge on as does Russell Brooks. It's service time, time to quickly check the hard-pushed cars and time to refettle for the miles ahead. Austin McHale, the Group 1 challenger, is already out having hit a bank and at this stage no one wants to be considered a leader. Buckley and co-driver John Capeless give the Vauxhall a look over. No problems are reported and the number two crew are going well. Quite well, it's quite slippy. Uh, we're taking our chance of driving steady and get still quite quick. Have you any idea who's leading at this stage? I have no idea. We've no times compared. Um, I don't know, the first stage was very slippy and with very little anything, one or two seconds. But again, it's only been three quarters of a mile. It doesn't say it's no, it makes no significant difference. The last stage, the first stage, the serious stage, the 20 mile. Uh, the second one was 16 or 17, so... Uh, what sort of work are you going to do here on the car at this point? Well, all we're doing this is just a general check, uh, petrol, uh, check tire pressure. Sorry, 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 Sydney Meek has slight problems with the special escort, but there is by no means despondency as a result of the opening stage miles. Well, it's, it's, it's all these sort of simple things, really. For instance, on the distributor on this car here, the fact that it's just a certain distance away from the crankshaft has got a, a peculiar harmonic effect, which has gone away with the electric.
electronic ignition, you know, things like that that you don't really foresee. Yeah, now you have actually, these are all, most of the ideas in this car are yours, is that right? Uh, not all, no. But some a lot of them? them. Yeah, yeah, some of them. Uh, we've done this project in, in conjunction with GARTEC. And obviously, um, the idea is to make a rally car out of the Mark III Escort with rear wheel drive, is that it? That's right, yeah. A, a car, originally we set out to build a car that uh, would suit the privateer, you know, where a privateer could use a lot of his Mark II running gear. And um, but this one here, as we went along with the project, um, we thought we had to make it into a more competitive car, so I think it will perform all right. Uh, it's going to take, obviously, it's like everything else, it's going to take a bit of sorting out. We haven't had the chance to play about the suspension and things like that, but Philly's the right sort of driver for it, you know. He's Why did you pick Philly? I mean... Well, he's a lot of experience behind him. He's driven a lot of different types of cars. He can turn around and tell you if it's, if it's doing something that it shouldn't be doing. I mean, he obviously can put his finger on it. And they, he's not going to break the car on us, you know. Sensible driver. Only the sensible stay in the running. The pace is hotting up, and Billy Coleman puts the boot in and reels off three fastest stage times. That's encouraging for the new team. After eight stages, the Tipperary garage owner, Donny Keating, is in the lead with the Chevette. Buckley, Coyne, Sean Campbell in the Opal, and Russell Brooks make up the top five. And as the crowds gather on the crossroads, the weather also improves. of the Meek Gartrack Escort rise and Billy Coleman climbs the leaderboard, they are as quickly deflated. The problems sideline the car for the day. They will try again tomorrow. Also out are Noel Smith in the Porsche and Brendan Fagan on his 10th attempt. comes through that Donny Keating is out with a blown engine, so handing the lead to Gerald Buckley, Brooks charges up to us with a puncture. There are plenty of helping hands for co-driver Paddy Kavanagh. Every second lost on this stage is a direct penalty. Brooks loses about five minutes here, dropping him to fifth again behind Gerald Buckley, John Coyne, Sean Campbell from Urie with the rough sounding Ascona 400, and Sean's brother Damien, who is an amazing fourth in a sunbeam. 
So as the action ends for day one, Richie Healy is the clear-cut Group 1 leader, the virtually standard car class. There are now only 50 cars still running, and the battle for the £2,000 first prize is very close between the sunbeam of Cork-based John Coyne and this man, Gerald Buckley, the leader for Vauxhall. We're leading by about 22 seconds from John Coyne. So now there are, what, 12 stages to go today, and uh, how are you going to play it? Yeah, 12 stages today, about half yesterday's driving. The stages there are quite short, so... I'll just be staying ahead, increase my lead a little, just in case I should get a puncher. Yeah, how well do you know this country down here? I mean, you are a Cork man and the stages are all in Cork. Well, I live in Cork. Uh, I still wouldn't know the roads well enough to uh, drive around Ben's Flat. But I would have a good idea of the kind of surface, the kind of Ben's Cork County Council put in roads. So I certainly should have an advantage. 22 seconds. It is very little. We took 17 seconds off, Jerry, on the last stage yesterday. So it's, it's there. It's doable. You know, a lot of the pundits are saying that John Kine knows his country now since you've been living in Cork for a while. Um, specifically where the stages are, I don't know. Yes, I have lived in the area for three years, and uh, the character of the area you tend to get to know. Now, how are you going to play it? Are you going to frighten the life out of Jar in the first stage and have a go at him and try to cut seconds off from every stage? Or I think so. We were quickest on the first real stage yesterday. We'll try and do the same again today. Yeah, you haven't won an international rally. I'm sure that must have crossed your mind as you went to bed last night. Maybe this is the big one. It's got to be a first time. Well, I'm reasonably well pleased, Michael, but uh, we've had a few problems. As you know, I've probably heard through the stages our exhaust manifold is broken. Now, uh, the car might not be that much down on par, but it feels a lot down on par. The noise is, is pretty horrific inside the car. Uh, up to that, I was very well pleased. We were keeping fairly well in touch with the boys. We were dropping back a little, but not as far as I would have expected, as you say, not being from the Cork area. Well, at the moment, I'm seventh overall, but I had an exciting day yesterday. On the fifth stage, I uh, crashed heavily on the sixth stage and bent my rear axle. But are you going to try and change that now this morning? No, no, I've, um, it's too big a job. We just haven't got time to do it. In the Sunday run, there are 12 stages. Billy Coleman is back out to continue development of the 2.2-litre Pinto engine Escort, and he is cock a hoop despite the problems. Well, uh, for a new car, I was absolutely delighted with it. It's, it's, personally, it's my first rally for a long time. I wasn't fully in the groove. Um, uh, all things considered, I, I was amazed with the performance because while, while the car was running properly, we were easily the fastest car in the event. Yeah, why do you say, I mean, what, what are you looking for in a car? I mean, you're talking about handling or...? Well, you're talking about yesterday was, was a very bad day, rain and body roads, and you want a car that's drivable at all times and it doesn't frighten you every second corner, which this thing just... It's perfect. You did mention to me that you felt that the, the brakes on the car were exceptional. That's right, yeah. There's this tremendous feel in the brake pedal, which is a very important part of a competition car. And uh, I, I don't know what the reason is, but this, this one certainly has it. What about the feel in the steering and the front suspension? And Excellent. As I say, for a, for a first time, you know, there's so much potential in this machine. I mean, how much better it can get is just... Uh, you're not disappointed with the problems you've had? No, not at all. We've got, actually, we've got further than we expected at all. Uh, you're expecting that type of problem? You well, it, it, why? It, it, the car was, was, was only completed uh, two nights before the event, so um, there's a lot of new, new stuff in it, engine, and you, know, you, you just can't drive that hard and, and uh, expect to you, uh, run trouble free. I ask you to stick your neck out. How far will this car go in, in the future? I mean, is it a car of the future? A rally car of the future? Well, I think it has to be. To say for first time out of it's that good, you know, when, what, what, what will it do when, with a couple of months' development? So the chase is on with John Coyne hoping to take the 22 seconds or more off Buckley. But the Bantier driver has already four Cork 20 wins to his credit. on in mixed weather, Gerald Buckley extends his lead. He is really charging with the 2.6 Chevette, and local man Frank O'Mahony drops out. He had been in the top ten.
Sean Campbell, despite the broken exhaust manifold on the Opal, holds third behind Coyne. His brother Damien drops out with a broken steering while fourth. Marie Maloney and Catherine Tracy at the back of the field are about to take another ladies' class win. Richie Healy moves up to fifth behind Russell Brooks in the Stratus. The Dubliner in the Ford Escort RS2000 wins both the class and the Group 1 Tarmac Championship. Day two and the rallies end and the skies are darkening, but there's no let up in pace. Gerald Buckley has his fifth Cork win and a 50-second margin over John Coyne in the Sunbeam. Sean Campbell nurses the Opal home in third place, and Russell Brooks is the first visitor having tamed the spectacular Lancia Stratus to take fourth. For Gerald Buckley, the Hal Tone Cork 20, 1981, worked out according to his plan. Yes, it is. I mean, a win is a win. Uh, it was a tough win, but uh, I'm happy and pleased that it's all over. Now, today, were you under a lot of pressure today, or did you know what was happening? That you know, were you have to cope with John Kind's pressure? No, it was, there was no pressure today. I just had to go out and drive today. Yesterday, I was just um, hanging in there. Uh, you can win a rally uh, the first day of a two-day event. You can only win on the second evening, in the la on the last stage. So I just stayed around long enough to put on the pressure when it needs to be to, uh, to win. Yeah, now, you've had a very good season. You've had two international wins in Galway and here. You finished uh, third in the circuit, second in the circuit of Ireland, third in Donegal. Are you happy with yourself? Yeah, that's, that's, that's very pleasing. Um, two wins out of four internationals and the second and third, yeah. But that's, that, I think that's a fantastic result. Yeah, I thought you went off the boil a bit uh, during the year you saw. As, as a driver, I thought you started very well in Galway. And then I thought that by the time the middle of summer came around that you were losing interest. Would that be right? Well, I think it would be right. Uh, I'm not a professional, of course, and I do have a business to run. I did have some business problems during the year, which I had to sort out and did take a lot of my time. So uh, probably my rallying suffered. But uh, the Cork 20 is one I really set myself up to win, and I just went out and won it. Is it the end of the season for you now? I think this is the end of this year, yes, but looking forward to a very bright and prosperous new year. Now, what about next year? I mean, can you tell us what plans you have? Are you hatching plans at the moment? Yes, well, I'll be still driving for GM. Uh, hopefully, uh, more professional next year, uh, as it will be. Uh, this year, in effect, was a, sort of a, a preliminary run. Uh, next year should really um, put the cream on it. Yeah. Now, this young man uh, standing sitting beside you here, his name is Gerard Buckley. Yes. Uh, is he any uh, relation of yours? Yeah, he's one of my little boys. And he's going to be a rally driver? Well, he claims to be a footballer and a rally driver. Well, I tell you something, Jerry. you don't mind me saying it, but Cork needs footballers at the moment. They have huh? got plenty of rally drivers and they need footballers. And I think Kerryman would agree with that, would he? I would think so, yeah. 